This video is about what happened with John Mayer in 2010 that Taylor Swift took to put into Dear John. It is a completely untrue song and it is plagiarized. It came from my writing to John in 2010 and the lyrics are lifted from what happened to me. There was not a relationship between John Mayer and Taylor Swift that she sold to the public and I know this because I was a witness to what happened in 2010 and I know that um, uh, my communication with him was um, what she took to try to make the story about her and uh, she was trying to force, she is trying to force a, a relationship with John Mayer publicly and um, Dear John was a retaliation when she could not get the relationship that she wanted and so um, she took that uh, hatred and harassment to the press and because she had been seen as the victim with Kanye and um, she was able to sell that to the press and everybody buy it wholesale. But I know that it was plagiarized and I know that it is untrue and I also know that John was single and did not have a relationship with her. So I know that it's completely untrue. Um, there is a mountain of evidence and it's very hard to try to fit all the evidence into one video because it's, it's, it's huge. <laughs> and so um, I'm going to try to give an overview and uh, of show um, where, where the lyrics came from, where the story came from. Taylor Swift's motive was to make the story about her. She was irate that he was responding to me and what I was writing online. And she was uh, absolutely demanding to make the story about her. Um, she had been in communication with John online uh, in, in um, communicating, but the difference between what was happening with John and I, and she was replicating everything I was actually writing and actually creating and so she was taking everything and replicating it. So there's um, a long history of this uh, but um, I write, uh, I wrote in 2020, I wrote an expose of her uh, and published it on my website Books of the Southwest and in, the, in that expose and in the opening slideshow I give all of the details of the dates and uh, what she was replicating uh, absolutely repeating everything. If John tweeted something, she then went and cre re recreated it. And this is where these plagiarism cases, these current cases, um, are, are don't understand the plagiarism is a pattern. And, and um, for example, I show on this slideshow that John had tweeted about Stevie Nicks. So when Taylor got to the Grammys, she performed Stevie Nicks. Um, so it, it, she was constantly trying to communicate with him but uh, in trying to force a relationship. When she could not get that relationship, could not get the publicity from it from him, she then retaliated with Dear John. Dear John was also plagiarized and I have uh, uh, mountains of evidence of the um, a, a severe pattern of plagiarizing everything and, and harassment. John Mayer was making it very clear that he was single and was not in a relationship. Um, when I came to know of him in March 2010, uh, I knew that he was single. He was making it very clear to me as well as to the public and the press. Um, he, um, with what had happened with Kanye and Taylor Swift and Beyonce in uh, September 2009, there was not a terrain for a relationship. Um, it was a very tenuous situation because the people who knew what was going on behind the scenes of Taylor trying to force being seen with John in public, um, John was very kindly and patiently making comments of, I'm single, I'm not dating, I'm not going to date. <laughs> so uh, he went on Ellen in December of 2009 and said that, that there, uh, he praised Taylor like he kept doing through 2010 and said uh, I'm single and I'm going to be single I'm not doing that uh, he made it very clear 
And then um, when I came to write to him, I was aware that he had said um, in uh, January that he was still in love with Jennifer Aniston. And uh, Jessica Simpson also, in her book, Open Book, um, corroborates that um, they were still involved into February of 2010. I came to know of him in March and uh, wrote him at the end of April online. And uh, so um, by that time, um, it was very clear to me that um, he was taking a break from relationships and, and you know, my writing reflected that. I, I, I understood that. When I started to write John online, uh, Taylor was uh, very much following his every move and he was prolific online. He kept a, a, a blog um, on, in, on Tumblr, um, he was doing frequent Ustreams, he was always on Twitter and uh, so um, it was, uh, you, you could pretty easily see what was going on with him. You know, he was, he was very public on social media. And so um, when I made comments to him and she saw them, uh, she started tracking me because he, he started responding to me. Um, uh, he, was not, he was not writing me back. He was, he, I could tell that in what he was saying, he had read what I had read. And so she knew that there was a correspondence going on. She then tried to force herself into that and make it about her. And it was not about her. And um, I could tell that she was trying to force herself into the picture. And she could sell to the public some idea that there was a relationship and make it about her. It was pretty easy for her to get publicity and to take anything she wanted to the public in that way. Um, I just kept, we kept corresponding and um, writing and uh, she was determined that that story of communication between she and John was going to be about her. And that's why You Get Speak Now is by October. She knew that she wasn't going to get the relationship, and so she determined that she would take it publicly. The thing is, is also that she's tried to do this now for 12 years. I've tried to force a relationship with John Mayer in the public, and it makes it because it is obscured by, oh no, she's with someone else. The, the evidence shows very clearly <laughs> when you look at the actuality of what's happening that um, she has been um, harassing both me and John Mayer um, and Katy Perry and, and a lot of people all, the, all these years. She has the power to take it to free publicity. Um, she has the power to look like the victim it's a narcissistic trait uh, to always try to make something about you and try to make yourself the victim. And um, I've, I have talked about this quite a, quite a bit. And um, she was, um, retaliation is, is not victimhood. <laughs> she was trying to force a relationship, trying to make the story about her, and then retaliating in the public view and trying to get the public to, to then triangulate against people like Katy Perry or John or me so that I can't go public. So the bottom line is that we're talking about um, plagiarism, copyright infringement, and harassment. And um, I can prove all of those things and that's why I'm presenting the evidence is because um, this, what happened with John, is a beautiful thing, and um, yes, I will will speak out about it. <laughs> I um, I have endured the harassment for 12 years, and um, I I think that it is um, very clearly uh, an abusive situation that the public doesn't know about. They buy very heavily into um, her. Um, uh, what she sells to the public as truth, which it is all complete lies, and I know it to be lies. Uh, I have all of this in the expose that I wrote in 2020. Um, for example, when she was supposedly together with Joe Alwyn, I know that she was actually on those days harassing John, and there's evidence, there's clear evidence of that. Uh, so it's completely untrue. So in my communication with John, uh, that I've talked about before. I took a trip to New York City to see him at Jones Beach 
and at that time I joined Twitter and I was posting on Tumblr and um, John um, was very uh, frequently on, on the social media and so that he could tell what was going on with me and I could tell what was going on with him and that was a mode of communication. That was, I could tell by what he was talking about that he had read what I had written and was responding. Uh, when you get into the plagiarism and the copyrights, uh, of, he knew the harassment that was going on. Uh, I do think that he was trying to protect me from it and was una unable to, to do so because um, it, it was very rampant. So on, the, uh, on my website, I, in this slideshow, I do the, the actual dates of what she was doing. For example, I would write about um, the movie that I had made that came out in 2007 about this um, uh, knowing someone from a past life and John had the song Do You Know Me and uh, in it he sings the lyrics uh, with a flower in your hair so when I would write about that within days within a couple of weeks she would appear with a flower in her hair this this kind of trying to let me know that she was reading it was not just harassment but it was it was then it stepped over the line into making the story her own for a public persona and narrative and then when Speak Now came out just actually plagiarizing it was then then it got into um, the actual um, copyright infringement so in 2010 I was writing a screenplay wrote it in 2008 registered it in January 2009 and um, then I was working on that screenplay as I wrote to John and I was writing to him about that so she plagiarized all of that so um, none of what she sold to the public as a relationship, as having uh, John as a physical partner, none of that is true. Uh, I, was, I am a witness to that, and I was there. I, uh, as she says, I was there. I was present with uh, communicating with John daily, and um, there most certainly um, he was not involved with her and was saying so. I am aware that there are um, many instances in 2009 and 2010, mostly 2010, that John was trying to tell Taylor, no, there's not going to be a relationship. Um, part of that is in when he released the video of um, Half of My Heart on um, June 1st of 2010, he... Um, has a note in his hand that says I can't stop loving you and he sets down the note and he walks outside and um, it's you know her voice is there uh, Taylor's voice is there on I can't stop loving you he sets down the note he walks outside and he gets a taxi um, I understood that, uh, that that was just a song that there wasn't a problem but then it became aware that there is a problem that she's trying to force it so uh, on my on my expose, I show that just eight days later, on June 9th, she tried to get photographed with him at the CMT Awards. Um, Nicole Kidman and Keith Urban were sitting there, and John was sitting by them. He was there to perform with Keith Urban, and she made her way over to that to to be photographed talking to John. <laughs> and um, by the time when you look at the photos, the the Getty Images photos. Um, he gets up and leaves and there's a seat filler there. He does not stay for that photograph. Um, so um, uh, there's so there's so much evidence that I know that he was being kind, that he was trying to be conciliatory. He presented her a songwriting award. Uh, he tried to get her to be kind and uh, it just came down to when she didn't get what she wanted she retaliated and it was with a lie. It was with um, trying to triangulate the press and the public against him. And it was also to harass me, to try to keep me silent. John um, was uh, free to do what he wanted and she was trying to make him not free to do that. And uh, it was clearly abusive and uh, very hard on him then to take that that further abuse um, that she unleashed in October on Speak Now. So I could go into a great deal of what all was plagiarized on Speak Now um, 
and read and and further on. Um, but I will talk about um, the lyrics of Dear John and how they came from my writing. All right, so and uh, I published uh, and I copyrighted this in 2017. Of what I did, I had to go back and publish everything that I had uh, posted online, that I had said online, that then became her material that she tried to take the story of me and the persona of me and try to make it hers. And she started doing that with, um, with trying to force this relationship with John. And so this is what I wrote to him. It's my blog posts. It's the photos that I posted. It's uh, the screenplay that I was writing. Um, everything that she was taking as her own material. So what I did was, um, it's called My Love Affair with Moonbeam, and she was doing everything, even from adopting cats, because I had these two dogs. I mean, it was, it was trying to replicate absolutely everything. In these blog posts, um, I, was, I show that I was writing what I was writing to John. When I first started writing him, um, I was... I had a sewing room and I was uh, a uh, sewing a dress and um, then when I got to New York City somehow on some social media John communicated about something about uh, wearing a dress and um, the girl of his dreams in this dress and um, he deleted all of his social media when this harassment of trying to force a relationship by what he was posting. Uh, uh, he, so he deleted everything off his Tumblr and off his Twitter, and um, off the he went offline completely um, because of that harassment uh, and trying to uh, force him into the public eye with her. Uh, so I knew that he was talking to me. So when you get to the lyrics of Dear John, the girl in the dress cried the way, whole way home. I had written to John, and it's in it's in the, in here documented that I had written to John um, uh, that I cried when I got home from New York City from seeing him at Jones Beach and at um, at uh, in um, Times Square and uh, at these shows and. Um, so the lyrics were, her lyrics were about what happened to me. That I cried when I got home. It was kind of a, of, of just a being blown away the, of what was happening with him because we had a, a, a really um, remarkable, it was a kind of an astounding connection. Um, and uh, it wasn't something that we wanted to let go. And so um, this communication, um, in, in a hard situation, it was a hard, a very hard year for him, and I was not pushing it, so I stayed. He, I stayed writing online, and then until he went offline, and um, and it was the cue that I needed to also <laughs> get offline because of this harassment. Um, the other lyrics of um, changing the skies comes from. Uh, that when I arrived home at, uh, from New York City and arrived home to my ranch in Texas, there was a rainbow at the gate, and um, also, and then uh, when I was upset and crying about that I uh, leaving New York, and the, um, he had um, posted something to social media about using a laser pointer and pointing out the rainbows, and so that's where she took the took the uh, lyrics of Change Her Skies and trying to make it about her. And uh, and it just absolutely was not about her. It was an experience that I was experiencing. It was what he was communicating and being violated in that. And um, so, um, so I knew that, um, that very little could be done about this retaliation of hers going making the story about herself public, because then the media and the press, uh, the the press and the public, all believed her, and uh, I just knew that it was um, absolutely untrue. I'm going to make one more point. I need to keep these videos short. I'm going to make one more point about this. Um, this harassment did, has not stopped for one moment. Um, 
from 2008 that I'm aware of until now. And people will um, say, well, um, how could that be true? <laughs> because so much has happened. In this. But um, for example, on my website, uh, I post a picture of, uh, well, I won't pull it. For example, on my website, I post a picture of my dad holding me as a baby, and there's a star clock behind me that looks like what's over John's head in his Half of My Heart video. So uh, Taylor immediately came out with this uh, video um, for I Bet You Think About Me and puts that star right behind John's head that's in that half of that heart. I mean, it is, it is, it's, it's not something she's ever going to relent. Her ability to get publicity, her ability to make it about herself, to put herself into the story, to insert herself into a relationship that did not happen, her ability to harass me behind the scenes, to harass John, all of that is there and has made this possible. So I, I myself, I didn't understand um, narcissistic personality disorder. I didn't understand um, the borderline personality where they cannot let go, they cannot be abandoned. The narcissistic personality disorder is that um, it, absolutely they have to have the power and control and, uh, and will be little and will punish and will do all these things. So the press has not been aware of this and I, I, I do, um, I did a lot of research with like, uh, with um, experts on this, like with Dr. Les Carter. Uh, he's on YouTube on surviving narcissism and he talks in depth about these abusive traits and how uh, prevalent they are and many many people suffer this and the press are not aware of this you know they don't understand that they're being used for publicity because it makes a big story of somebody who was in a relationship and uh, she knew that she knew she could take this to the press um, uh, but I know and can prove that it's all lies and that it's plagiarized and um, it's, it is this harassment. In December 2010, at the end of 2010, uh, when John had gone offline, had got, he had gone quiet um, after she released, um, right before she had released Speak Now. Um, I um, it went quiet between us, and um, so I started writing and making a little short film video, and it's called Until I Was Seven, and it's on my YouTube, and it's about a boy painting her, painting the girl um, rainbows, and that comes from the work of the what John had been communicating to me in 2010 and so I was writing that so I published uh, I put that video out in the December of 2010 to show that um, this was the real thing that was happening it was for something I had made for John um, and uh, so Taylor takes the ballerina out of this for the uh, for the um, shake it off video um, referencing she's constantly referencing all these things that happened in 2010 but they did not happen to her uh, I have all the evidence of that um, this story is not about Taylor Swift